So I usually save these kind of like rants uh, about web development for the podcast, um, but I wanted to try just throw out a video here. Um, I want to talk about no build. So what is no build? Um, it is building sites um, and projects and apps without a build process, without a bundling process, uh, basically without NPM, uh, which is how I generally build sites. And maybe a lot of people uh, you know, I could take it or leave it, but that's what, sort of what this was about. Um, there was a recent discussion on X, um, and I won't try to link specific tweets. It's such a mess to try to follow, um, you know, the different steps in, in how some of these conversations go. But it started with a tweet from the HTMX account, right? So, um, and basically it was, you know, we're now at a point where you can ditch, some people can ditch the build system. Um, I think it was even just like for certain projects and people underestimate what a, you know, what a, a weight off people's shoulders, what a, you know, the, the people's burden shoulders. So, uh, you know, basically the idea is like the build process uh, is not necessary for everything. We're at a point where the no build can actually work pretty well. So CDNs, um, which is what HTMX is, you know, this is a HTMX is you usually pull it in with a CDN. Same with Datastar, same with Alpine, same with a lot of the tools, mo almost every tool that I use uh, and have, I have talked about here. So this led to kind of a lot of um, spirited argument afterwards. And people, I think, were really attacking the idea of no build. So, you know, having a traditional website with CDNs or with your own hosted CSS files, uh, JavaScript files, and they were basically saying this can't be used for real apps. Um, it can't scale. It's a skill issue. And, you know, I just, this is something, um, my own feelings aside, the way I build stuff, you know, obviously I don't, it's like not fun that people be like, oh, you're, you don't build real stuff or whatever. But just at a bigger picture, um, I, it's just like a mentality that I just really don't like. Um, and that goes back, I think I've seen that since my days, you know, doing the computer science major. People tend to think that if they're doing something difficult, if they're doing something complicated, um, that what they do, what they're doing right now is the only way to do it. And I say right now because those same people will then change to whatever the new industry standard is, you know, but now that's the right way to do it. And anybody's still doing it the old way, you know, they're the ones that now they can't build real apps. And don't get me wrong, like they're often doing cool things, um, but it's like my feeling is that they get these blinders on um, when they start doing some industry standard thing. And I just don't like to see anybody diminished for building things the way that they are doing things, you know, however, whatever they're doing. Uh, in the context of this argument, this was, there are people making our assumptions that any project that uses no build, that it doesn't work, that it can't scale, and that like real apps don't do it. So, you know, and I've been programming for 20 plus years now and like professionally web development for like 15. I've only used the build process for some projects for a couple of years. I used it. I worked at an agency. We mostly did it. So I have to question, you know, have I built any real apps in all that time? Um, and for me, obviously, the answer is yes. Like I've made apps that have made money for other people, um, for myself. I've made apps that work. I've made apps that serve their purpose. Um, I've made apps that have great UX and have great, um, you know, UI, UX, whatever you want to call it. Um, so all that was programming, sometimes even before a build process existed, you know, because I, I've been around for a while. So I was there sort of before it happened. And I get why it exists, right? Like the build process and the bundling process was an answer to a problem of a bunch of different people started using more and more JavaScript files. And at some point, it does get unwieldy if you're using a whole bunch of stuff and kind of spreading it out across your system. You need to standardize it. It's the same reason that any, any like package manager, so NPM, Node Package Manager, this is mainly what we're talking about. Um, like PHP has the Composer Package Manager. Uh, 
it makes sense. You want to keep track of your dependencies at some level if you have a lot of dependencies. So, you know, it's not that there isn't any need for it, obviously. At its best, I'd say it organizes and kind of, uh, if you have a lot of files, it can minify them and then they can sort of efficiently and accurately be shared across your different devs and across your app and stuff like that. Right, so that's that's what how it should work. Um, in practice, what it sometimes means, especially uh, you know for some big projects, is that you are sort of bundling up hundreds uh, or thou, you know, let's say hundreds of thousands of lines of JavaScript um, through an extremely complex chaining process, mapping different versions of different things. Uh, you get this, you know, at the NPM dependencies, if you were to look at that dependency tree in a, in a large project um, and look at your, your node modules folder and stuff, it's enormous it's complicated and this this is the sort of you know people can accept that because it works and you, the benefits of it etc but for many projects for a lot of projects it turns into like a house of cards right like you you don't know what part of that chain could break one single link in that chain breaks uh, or just like changes all of a sudden and you might not even have an app anymore right so it requires this kind of constant maintenance. So if you have money to burn, as these big companies do, it's fine, um, which is where a lot of these people are coming from, you know, these big companies. But when you are a small shop, right, so um, or you're working for small clients and your time is really precious and you do not want to devote your time to making sure that these dependencies over time are not changing or out of date or they've changed how they work and now you have to like go through and sort out your new dependencies and all of a sudden everything's broken everything's down so or if you if you just need to your system to work exactly the way that you programmed it the way that it has worked you know for the next 5 years or the next 10 years or you know the next 50 years, if you're getting really optimistic about this stuff, um, you don't want to be dealing with that dependency chain uh, and the weaknesses in that, you know, what's the weakest part of your dependency chain? That's going to be the thing that's going to break you. So if you're building for yourself, uh, just my, this is just my personal feeling, like, for God's sake, don't ever believe that you have to do it just one way. If you think that you can't build a real app, I just, that's the mentality that I just, I find it like antithetical to my vision of what it means to be a developer. Um, so if you love the build process, like it, that's fine. If that's part of your thing, like if you haven't been bitten by it or you just overall, like you, you work with it, it's not a big deal, um, you know. I would I hope you don't consider it a skill issue and anybody who doesn't really enjoy it that much. Um, but just, you know, remember that nobody can tell you how to build stuff. So just like my thing is like keep exploring, keep trying stuff, maybe even try a build setup if you haven't used it before. Try NPM, see what you like, see if it gets you something nice that you like, because, you know, ultimately, I think the people that aren't open to the new ideas uh, will be left behind. And, you know, new ideas, old ideas, every idea, just people who are not looking at other ideas around. Uh, and that's something that the original HTMX post mentioned is that no build has been getting better and better. You know, it's it's not like it used to be 10 years ago where you have nothing. Uh, and there aren't, you know, there aren't, there's all these kind of CDN stuff and there's other just other tools to sort of help you work with a no build setup. So Tailwind CSS recently just posted that they're, you know, having a no build headless UI version with vanilla JavaScript. That's a new, you know, that's something that they've been kind of just in the React ecosystem for so long because of this. Um, in fact, and then there was uh, the creators of React Router recently on Twitter posted that they're putting out Remix 3, which like to the surprise of everyone, it seemed like, um, is not going to use, uh, yeah, Remix 3 is not going to use React. It's going to use Preact instead, which is a just like tiny, you know, version of React that has a lot of the power, um, but kind of shrunken down and, and minif minified, minimalized, whatever you want to call it. And... Not only are they switching away from React, they're also 
going to no build. So, I mean, this is like heresy in that part of the world as the sort of Twitter thread, you know, this sort of arguments that happened, including ones that I was part of. Um, but those developers don't care about the heresy of, you know, what should be done and what, you know, it's more about the product. It's more about this strategy of like, we need to ruthlessly improve on the solutions of our predecessors and we need to reconsider and avoid the problems that our predecessors have and rethink these kind of things. So they're innovating in their space. And, you know, as I understand it, it's not like they're switching to like a hypermedia setup or something like that. It's still all the virtual DOM. It's still client first. But if they had been dogmatic about it, and not like sort of question their basic assumptions about, oh, well, obviously everything has to have a build process. You know, they would not have considered this kind of innovation and building something new. Um, so the main thing is there's just, I just don't think there's just ever just one way to build stuff. And there, in the long time that I've been building stuff, never have seen that. It's always things are cyclical. There's always different ways to build stuff. That's what, you know, no matter what the industry says about it, there's always going to be, if, if you want, if you're looking for a job, go for what the industry says, like learn the build process, learn React. That's where most of the jobs are right now. Learn the front end stuff. That's fine. Like APIs, JSON APIs, all that kind of stuff. Do that. But I think part of being a dev is exploring, you know, Keep exploring, keep building cool stuff, and you know, don't tear anyone down ever for the way that they're building stuff. Um, even if it's a no-build way to build, if that makes sense. <laughs>